Hey yo, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another action figure review. Today we're looking at the Core Elite um, versus the Curse, I guess. Uh, collection from uh, Walmart, actually. This is made by Leonard or Leonard or however you pronounce that. I'm going to say Leonard. <laughs> Exclusively available at Walmart. Comes with three figures in the set and some kind of accessory in here. Today we're looking at the one with the uh, cool looking racing bike looking thing. The packaging itself is uh, pretty nice to be honest with you. I do kind of like the uh, kind of graffiti look on the back. Has some nice character art up at the top. Flipping it over to the back. We get a little uh, synopsis of what the core elite versus the curse is all about. Um, but unfortunately not a whole lot of backstory with anything like that. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of cool looking anyways. Uh, I do wish they had a little bit more backstory and I may have to go out here to their website here. TheCoreHQ.com and see if they have any other information about the actual characters themselves because um, it's really the one thing I found lacking in this particular budget friendly set is there is not much in terms of who these people are and what their characters are none of that stuff so I guess the uh, G.I. Joe stuff I'm used to kinda has me spoiled a little bit with that but regardless let's go ahead and open this thing up uh, this set itself is actually pretty cheap I think it uh, comes in about eight bucks or something like that at Walmart which is not a bad deal uh, considering you get three figures and a cool little accessory in this case the motorbike again the uh, the core here is kind of the budget friendly version of the G.I. Joe team for considering we can't find a whole lot of G.I. Joe right now at retail stores uh, this may be the best we can do for a while. Comes with this nice little cardboard cutout thing here, which uh, doesn't really do much, so it'll probably end up being recycled. Again, some nice package art. I will give them that. A nice little curse logo here in the background, so that's uh, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and pop all this stuff out. One figure. Two figure, three figures, and a cool racing bike, uh, and then all the accessories that come in it. Uh, these are all mostly taped in here, so I'm going to slice the tape off just to make it easier to get this stuff out, in theory. I will say it's cool that you get uh, quite a few accessories with this kit. Uh, we'll see how good they are here in a few minutes, but uh, they're at least not skimping on the number of accessories. Not quite as generous as uh, like the G.I. Joe 50th anniversary two packs and three packs, but uh, it is a budget friendly line, so that uh, has to be taken into consideration. A little piece of tape stuck on that one. And this last little knife thing here. Come out, knife. Cool. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So we've got uh, this figure here, which, again, I don't know who he is. Uh, the bad guy figure, evidently, as... Uh, I'm guessing by the fact that he's pretty much all black and has that kind of blood red paint job going on. Cool female figure. Cool motorcycle. We get uh, a total of three knives. A cool looking uh, flamethrower looking gun thing. A <laughs> uh, cool looking revolver. Another pistol. And this uh, large caliber machine gun thing. So 
Uh, that's all we get in the set, so let's go ahead and zoom in now and take a look at the figures individually. The first figure we're going to look at is, I think, known as Buckshot. Again, it's not listed on the package, and I've not really looked at their website to find out anything more about it, but uh, I do remember that they had this character on the back of one of the other packages we looked at, and the name listed under that guy was uh, Buckshot, so we're going to call him Buckshot. Looking at the figure itself, uh, it's got some nice detail work on this thing. Some really nice sculpting work here. A lot of detail they put into all the little accessories and stuff all the way around the figure. Uh, some of the paint apps are a little sloppy. His uh, little mustache thing there looks like it. Uh, they missed a few spots on it. But all in all, not too bad. Sculpting wise, it looks pretty good. Again, I have to keep in mind that it is a budget friendly line of toys so not expecting a whole lot articulation wise the head does move left and right and officially does go 360 degrees around no up and down motion though uh, shoulder joint is just a single swivel no articulation at the waist and just a single swivel at the hip joint as well no other articulation in this figure which is a shame, but it's uh, kind of standard for this particular line. So, no big surprise there. They do have peg holes in the bottom of his feet, so that's a bonus for us. So, overall, not too bad. Accessory-wise, we have... Uh, the one good thing I will say about this particular line, they tend to uh, have the accessories kind of color-coordinated. So if you line up all of the accessories together, uh, you'll notice they are actually different shades of colors. I don't know how well you can see that here, but that does kind of help uh, differentiate the uh, which accessories are supposed to go with which characters. So that's why I've grouped these two particular accessories with this one figure. We have uh, to start off with this cool looking knife. It's got some nice detail work on it. It is a very flimsy plastic as you can see. But still, it's a cool looking knife. Fits in his hand really easily. It's a little loose. But uh, again, their hands tend to be a little oversized for their grip. But it still fits in there really easily. Looks really nicely. So you've got a, a cool looking Bowie knife there for that guy. And we also have this revolver pistol. Which uh, doesn't have a whole lot of details. But a few little bitty things that make it stand out a little bit more than I was expecting anyways again it fits in his hand pretty easily no problems there whatsoever so that is Buckshot all in all pretty decent figure just uh, average I guess the lack of articulation drops it down a little bit for me but yeah it's not a bad figure up next is who we're going to assume is the cursed leader. I don't have any actual bio information on this guy right now, so uh, if anybody knows the actual character name, feel free to drop a comment in down below. But here he is. He uh, looks like kind of a Darth Vader looking -y dude. <laughs> Some pretty nice paint work here. Um, a nice little skull motif going on here. Uh, looks almost like some kind of welder guy. So yeah, some nice sculpting work anyways. Um, don't really know much about what's going on with him, but uh, kind of cool looking. The uh, proportions on this guy, his face is a little bit too big for the rest of his body. Um, other than that, it's not too bad at all. Uh, articulation wise, the head does move 360 degrees, but uh, the sculpting on his collar here does limit that. He does have a ball and swivel at the shoulder joint, ball and swivel at the elbow joint, and nothing at the wrist, unfortunately. Uh, no articu- well, actually, he does have articulation at the waist. That's a, a bonus here. We, I was not expecting that. None of the rest of these figures I've seen so far have done that. Uh, standard, just a regular swivel here at the hip joint. He does have a single knee joint. And that looks like it for the leg articulation. 
Uh, he does have peg holes in the bottom of his boots. So yeah, overall it's a much better figure than I was expecting here. Uh, again, he does look kind of like a Darth Vader reject, but uh, still kind of a cool looking figure. Not bad at all, to be honest with you. Uh, I've got these two accessories here, this large caliber machine gun here, which has some nice detail work on it. Uh, it does have kind of a slightly oversized grip on it. It also comes with uh, the peg on the side here, so it will double as a backpack. You take the figure, find the peg hole in the back, and just uh, put that in place right there, and there you've got a way to carry your weapon there pretty easily. So that's a nice little touch they've done here. The other accessory is this, uh, I guess it's kind of like a spear gun now that I'm looking at it. It uh, has this cool looking real thing down here at the bottom and this little hose, which I'll assume at this point now is uh, the actual uh, line attached to the spear. Some nice detail work on it. It looks pretty cool. Again, a slightly oversized grip on it, but uh, it's not a problem for these particular characters because their hand grips are a little bit larger than normal anyways. He can grasp the weapon pretty easily, although it, uh, it's kind of at an odd angle. I'll try it in the other hand just to see if it looks any better. And it really doesn't, so... Yeah, it's a slightly odd looking weapon there. I guess you can do it as a shoulder mount thing and it's not bad at all. So yeah, pretty cool looking figure. Some decent accessories. Not bad at all. Better than I was expecting anyways. The last figure in this set is, um, I'm assuming, a version of the character Snakebite. At least that's the way it's listed on one of the other cards I had. And this was really the, the figure that I was more interested in out of the set, which is kind of what prompted me to pick up the set to begin with. So let's take a look at her. Uh, some nice sculpting work here. The figure itself looks really nice. It's uh, basically the same mold as the other snake bite version that we saw earlier. The different uh, paint job on it. Uh, it suffers from some of the same issues as the other sculpt, unfortunately. The waist area or the chest area here looks a little bit uh, out of proportion. It's a little too short, in my opinion. It can stand to be elongated a little bit to make it look a little bit better. But uh, all in all, it still looks pretty nice. The head sculpt, again, is slightly oversized. So it does look a little bit out of place, but uh, it's not too bad. It's definitely got a unique hairstyle going on. A nice little punk rock looking thing. So kind of cool looking. Um, articulation wise, the head does spin 360 degrees. Up and down a little bit, but not a whole lot. Shoulder joint is a traditional ball and swivel. Traditional ball and swivel at the elbow joint as well. Uh, nothing at the wrist. At the rib cage, we do have a slight bit of articulation there. Uh, it will turn side to side a little bit, but uh, it does have limited mobility there. But it's there anyways. Uh, traditional T-hook kind of uh, hip joints here. Um, and unfortunately, they don't spread out a whole lot, but you do have front and back motion. It's pretty good on this one. Uh, single knee joint. This one is a little bit loose, as you can see here. No other articulation on the leg itself. So all in all, it's not bad. It's definitely a step up from some of the other characters that we've had. And again, it's the same sculpt we saw in the other female character from the uh, Core Elite line. So it should not be anything new or unexpected if you've seen that one. Uh, I do like the paint job on this one a little bit better. I do like the uh, kind of uh, gray and brown camo pattern that they have going on here. It looks really cool. They've done a nice, nice job with that. Again, some nice detail work on the pants and the legs. And all in all, pretty cool looking figure. 
She does have a holster on her side here for a pistol. A molded in knife at the bottom here. The accessories that come with this figure are the same ones that we saw in the other lanyard review. Got this cool looking crossbow to begin with. Fits in her hand really easily, really nicely. The actual handle for the uh, crossbow doubles as a peg to hold it in her back. So, nice little holster action going on there. Pretty cool looking. Nice little thought that they put into that. She also has this cool looking pistol. It's got a big silencer on that and it uh, just looks like a cool gun right there. That also fits in her hand easily enough. And the pistol also fits into the holster at her side really easily. Nice and secure fit there. And as I've said before, I really like the fact that they, when they do include pistols with uh, holsters on them so they can carry them around. That's a really awesome little thing for me anyways. She also has these two knives. Um, nice detail work on them. Not a whole lot going on, but just enough. Again, they fit in her hand really easily. They look a little small here, but uh, still pretty nice. On the actual knife blade itself, you've got these uh, little holes here. Those are to peg onto her back. So find her backpack. They've got these two pegs at the top here. Just line them up and uh, snap them in place. And there's two of them, one on each side of her shoulders. And then you can kind of see that her blades kind of fit in her backpack like that. So that's a nice little touch there. I've always liked that about this particular set. It's, it's nice when uh, things like that just kind of work. So yeah, this uh, figure is a really cool figure. Um, I would say pick up the set just for this one is uh, a good move. You may be able to find the figure itself in a separate package, but... Uh, when I was looking, this was the only way to get this particular figure, so that's why I picked up the package. The last part of this set is the cool race bike looking thing here. It's got a nice paint job on it. It uh, does remind me a whole lot of the Silver Mirage from the G.I. Joe line. Some nice detail work on it. Uh, unfortunately, only one side has the paint apps on it. The other side is just the plain silver color. So. Eh, it's still not too bad. They did put a lot of nice detail work on it. You can see the chain over here on the back tire. The tire does spin, not very freely, but it spins. The front one works a whole lot better. It is molded plastic, not rubber on the wheels. The handlebars do turn, which is a nice little touch there, but uh, the actual front wheel does not turn along with it, so... Oh no, though, it's a pretty cool looking bike. Again, it's very similar to the uh, Silver Mirage from the G.I. Joe line. So, as far as the actual figures themselves, uh, they can actually fit on here pretty easily. Uh, and the way this bike is actually made makes a little bit more sense than uh, one of the other ones we saw. Works pretty well. Characters fit on here pretty easily, and it looks really nice. So, yeah, this is a cool little accessory. I wouldn't pick it up just for this thing, but uh, if you have the pack itself anyways, it's just a nice little bonus accessory. So, yeah, pretty cool. So, all in all, this is a uh, decent pack. Um, it's not a stellar pack, but for the, uh, the price point, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, I do really like the motorcycle in this particular one. The snake bike figure is the standout. Um, the Curse Leader is uh, pretty cool, actually. It's a lot better than I thought it was. And then the Buckshot figure is kind of a throwaway. Uh, the articulation really hurts it quite a bit. For any of y'all interested in comparing with the G.I. Joe line, we've got Beachhead from the 25th anniversary. So you can see they are all pretty much in scale here with uh, that line. So this will integrate pretty well into that. Um, same thing with the Motorcycle. The uh, character here can fit in here pretty easily, and you won't really have any problem whatsoever 
You don't have to squint to make it look like it's in the same scale or anything like that. It works pretty well. Pretty nice little uh, thing going on there. So, um, yeah, I would say uh, for the price, yeah, pick this thing up if you see it. Um, it's always nice to have extra female figures. This one's a pretty good one as well. And the, the bike is uh, a nice little extra bonus to it. So, yeah, nothing stellar, but... It's still not bad. That's all the time we've got today, so thanks for watching. Feel free to drop some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this particular set. Also, if you have any other kind of line that you'd like us to take a look at in the future, let us know. We'll be glad to try to track something down and do a quick review for anybody. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to our channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.